disclaimer. Hello everyone, we're gonna get into some controversy because uh, it's gonna be an anime tier list video. So basically we're gonna go through all of Beyblade, we're gonna see what shit, what isn't, and uh, pretty much go from there. Yeah, obviously this is my opinion. And then after you just wanna read the other factory, you can just pause right now, but that's pretty much a lot of the stuff that factors into the seasons and also just my general enjoyment out of it. So starting us off at peak, we have Bakuten Shoot Beyblade season one. So first of all, we gotta talk about the fact that that house absolutely went crazy for this. Uh, yeah, to, to think that Madhouse was like an animation studio that worked on uh, Beyblade is kind of nuts. Very, very good for just fluidity, uh, for how the characters work, like art, animation, everything, everything stellar, stellar, superb. This was also the only season that actually animated the actual Beyblades, like hand-drawn, before we just got into like the CG stuff. Uh, what I really like about this is that, you know, like this, this whole thing with the torment going on, uh, your protagonist, by the way, Tako Kiyomiya, uh, they also focus on uh, Kai, Max, Rei, and I love how they focus on all four of these characters, but they all weave it, like together. And I, I like, I just like from start to finish, all the arcs they tell throughout it, uh, and until the end, I think it's a very enjoyable experience. Not even to mention like antagonists like Boris, uh, who's, who's, who's a scumbag, uh, and Yuri, I, I, I think we're like done <laughs> very well. It's also kind of nuts too, it's also like the fact that uh, we get introduced to like a lot of stuff like bit beasts, or like sacred bit beasts, or like all, 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 all this stuff, whatever. And why I'm saying this, because now we get into season two, which I have ranked this as good which is V-Force. Now, there is a very much a giant shift uh, in V-Force. Character designs uh, differ significantly. It, it does take a while to kind of get used to, but eventually get used to it. I'll say V-Force for what it does pretty well. I think it's a good overall story that's told, great character work, and a very, very good lore building. Uh, they have multiple antagonist groups throughout uh, the season. Like everyone's basically trying to get like the bit beast, but I think it overall sold pretty well. I think there's some pacing issues. Uh, I think it's kind of when you get like a, a little bit near the like the middle portion, kind of uh, a, a little bit of pacing that I did not like uh, too too much. Uh, I like groups like the Saints. I think that's really good. You even got like the goofy side, or, like like this like Team Rocket group that they have. Uh, the music sub that thing is kind of mid. I feel like they have two tracks and that's about uh, it. Uh, aside from that, also just like the CG battles, like I, I, I try to be as fair as possible, but they are kind of really dated to look at. And considering that most of Beyblade is like on a lot of the battle stuff, uh, yeah. And listen, with the multiple arcs that go throughout V-Force, I think they tell a lot, a lot of good stories from stuff like the Cyberbladers, and you know, where this all kind of leads up to kind of the end, which I'm gonna kind of put up spoilers now. Yeah, so skip it. I'll, I'll basically have like this giant spoiler block. Skip it if you really care, but essentially they have this whole twist thing where they're like, see, it was actually a robot. And I'm like, oh, okay. You can, I, I, I kind of feel when I was watching it, I feel like there's probably a lot of censorship they had to probably go through because I feel like they were trying to make it maybe a little bit more darker than whatever they actually had. I, I don't know how to feel and I, I feel like, you know, when you go through this entire season, you get to the kind of the end part, you're mostly left with like, meh, okay, I guess. So for G-Rev, uh, it, it's, it's peak, man. It, it's absolutely peak. Uh, the OST is actually just awesome. But uh, you know, uh, what I feel um, is kind of interesting to talk about with G-Rev. Uh, so the reason why I have it so, so high is just because I, I just really enjoy the season a lot. There is some criticism I have. Yeah, I'm putting spoilers on this one. Uh, my criticism is how they handle Yuri and G-Rev. Cause he was, he was actually doing something interesting in the story and they just threw him in a fucking coma. They, they're trying to do a lot of stuff where they try to take a lot of stuff from the first season and try to put it now in the third season. Like, So like for an example, the first half is where they kind of have like Kai and this rivalry to Taco that's kind of like uh, pushed on, right? And it's like, hey, well, you remember that rivalry that you kind of had in season one? Well, now, now there it is. Or, or like now in like the second half, right? Where in the second half, it's like, hey, Boris and Vega, you remember how Boris is like a, a, a manipulative scumbag? Well, he's here another time. 
all other stuff I didn't like. I absolutely hate Daichi. I think uh, Daichi is just an absolute garbage character. He's basically like a gag character, but the gag's never funny and it's very annoying. Also, similar to season one, I think they handle all the teams and all the characters very, very well, and I very much enjoyed seeing them explore a lot of the different teams and stuff. It's really too much to go into just for one video. It's supposed to be tearing everything, but also I, I loved uh, Brooklyn, by the way. I thought Brooklyn was very enticing to watch that season and thought he pretty much stole the show any scene he was in. I said Bakuten Shoots overall is not a giant toy ad and they focus on good story work. And battles other than like maybe kind of like some stuff in V-Force are very consistently solid to watch. Now we have Metal Fight Beyblade. I grew up with this, so what do I think? Um, great. Uh oh, you're gonna see the little warning is a spoiler and then after we'll continue from there. But from losing his father, even though his father was returned at the end, to eventually controlling himself and getting over his emotions, I thought was really cool. I like how they utilize a lot of characters, like Tsubasa, for an example, like in the manga, is kind of just a filler blader, but in the animation, it's actually utilized quite a bit to be very interesting. I think even though Ryuga is not like some really in-depth antagonist, right? And, you know, I think, with Beyblade for a lot of times, you can just have very basic antagonists or you can have, you know, some depth ones. I think Ryuk is just like fine where he is, you know, he's kind of just like just evil for evil's sake, but I think he's done pretty well. I think Kiyoya and other characters are done pretty well for the story and feel like real progression. I feel like there's genuinely good stakes in this season. Yeah, aside from that, when we get to Metal Fight, like, season two... Great! You can go for a story, I think, kind of basically included in season one. So, it, 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 this season's more like, kind of like Masamune focus, is kind of how I viewed it. It was like another tournament season, right? I mean, it's Beyblade, right? I don't, I don't think I have to mention if it's a tournament season. Like, pretty much almost all the time it's a tournament season, but whatever. Uh, I think the character of Toby was handled pretty cool because there's this whole thing where he's like sick and everything and it's really focused on him and, and Masamune and like, and Zio too. And like throughout the season, Masamune is trying to be like number one is in like all his aspirations. And that's also Zio's goal. And then after like, you know, like the friend that they were trying to be number one for, then after you find out that he, he turned into goddamn Sephiroth at, at the end, I thought, oh, that that's kind of neat. Even, even if like, you know, at the end, like Toby's kind of like, eh? I, I think a lot of the antagonists in this season, uh, like Damien, Julian, you know. I feel like in this season is pretty strong for character work for a lot of the opposing teams. And plus also I very much enjoyed the lore building uh, and kind of continuation from the previous season. Like with the whole arc that Tsubasa has with this dark side and also Ryuga coming back and mastering uh, El Drago. All of it adds to be a solid season. Unfortunately, that was great. Where this gets to like, good is 40. Now, why do I have 40 below these other seasons? So I think 40 still keeps the epicness of the metal fights. Like it's like metal fights kind of like a spectacle almost for a lot of, a lot of what it does. But I think, for example, characters like Rago are a bit too like too generic. Where I feel like it's kind of pushing on me to ever take it serious. Especially since like, like I even checked the manga. Right, you guys think they absolutely screwed with his entire character. Goes through this whole development through like two seasons of no longer wanting this dark power, all this stuff, not being power hungry, using his own power, and then, then he goes back to power hungry? They're trying to get to this point where Nemesis gets revived, but I think how they did it doesn't make any sense. Like I feel like a lot of times characters are just made to be very stupid in order for Nemesis to get uh, born. You know, like, if you're gonna progress to that point, I think you gotta do it in a way that kind of makes sense. I, I, I don't know, that's kind of how I felt. I think the music's absolutely awesome. I think there's a lot of good strong visuals and art. I think this season does pretty well to expand on kind of the lore metal fight and also does some pretty good focus on characters like Kenta. I do think at times with the 4D season, it, it, it might get a, l a, a little bit goofy and, and, and a little bit confusing with some of the rules they tried to establish, but it, it, it's cool, I guess. Uh, Zero G we pretty much have in terrible. I just think it's just a boring season. I think visually the art and the animation are at its weakest for this season of Beyblade. I, I don't really care too, too much on, on the cast of characters. I feel characters like Kira and Sakyo are just not that really interesting at all. I feel like the biggest issue with the Metal Fight animation is that when the manga has so much lore and all all, all, all these really good, well-written story elements, but the anime is off doing its own thing, and then after you run into holes, 
right, in writing where they basically put themselves into like this grave that they dug themselves into. Where Metal Fight really bugs me is like, okay, you have a character like Hikari, right? So in the first season, uh, after a match with Ryuga, when Ryuga like does all that dark move, all that stuff, you know, she has like a lot of trauma and anxiety, right? And we see this in the second season. She is assisting uh, Ryo, right? And basically, you know, okay, fine, you know, she's not going to be blading, whatever, fine, you know, that makes sense. You just want to kind of help on the sideline, I, I guess. Okay, so by the third season, right, you'd think with this role being the head of the WBBA, all that stuff, where it's to make blading safe, all the stuff, to make sure everything goes okay, you'd think it would make sense that she would succeed in that role, and that could have been something pretty cool. And and they just gave it to Sabasa. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Does it even make any sense? <laughs> It's like any chance of like female rap metal fight just like destroys. As we end off for metal fight, I think the best way to describe it is like it's like the spectacle, right? And I feel that for the most part, they are able to do stuff pretty well in in interesting. There are times when I think it, it, it's exceedingly better than a lot of stuff that uh, the manga had, or times where I think it's like really like incredibly worse. But, you know, overall, I think the battles were really intense and good to watch. I think the music overall for, like, I don't know, it was pretty much strong for all of it. I just think it, some parts where I do think they kind of fail is, like, the, the female representation. I feel Metal Fight is still the, the worst generation uh, for female rep. After in Great, we have Burst Season 1 for the Burst Generation. Uh, I think Season 1 is really, really good. It's very grounded compared to like other previous generations. They do a lot of character work in Burst compared to other stuff. And it's not like other stuff doesn't do character work. It's just, it's a lot more in Burst. And it's like, it's like a lot more focused on like the characters and what they're doing than kind of like, let's say, like the battles. So that's kind of like what I feel. Or maybe just, just like in general. I think the finale I think was done pretty pretty well. I don't think Burst in general did anything exceptionally well that they excelled at. I just think it, it was a unique take that I like. Uh, now speaking of Burst, when we get to like season two with like God, I think God is just okay. Now obviously from season one to season two you have Volt. I think the Volt progression is fine. I'm not really like the most insane Volt fan. I think it's just okay. I don't want to say generic. It's just like meh. I think his development in the second season uh, it is good enough. I, I guess, but you know, God War, I think it also does well, like again, a lot of visuals and like stuff with like shoe free, like a lot of the stuff when I'm trying to remember, like Requiem, a lot of the stuff I think is held pretty good. Um, where I think it fails a lot is that they're, they're shoving too much crap into this season. It's a world tournament. There are these shadow bladers. There is Shoe is now gone uh, evil. There, there, there is this other side villainous group. It's like they're trying to like, okay, you remember Cyberbladers from Bakuten Shoot Beyblade? You remember Boris from Bakuten Shoot Beyblade? Do you remember, okay, here, here is that, but executed in the worst way possible. That's pretty much Beyblade Burst God. The absolute thing I absolutely despise with God is that they throw so many characters in, like, in Bakuten Shoot Beyblade, there's a lot of characters that don't actually get releases, but like how they write the teams and everything, like the character work, like like in G Revolution, is done super, super, super well. And, and also, you know, like season one, whatever, you get the idea, right? God, it's so one dimensional. Like if you don't actually own a Bay, it's almost like non-existent for so many characters. I think Shu is done okay this season, just in terms of an antagonist. I, I, I'm not too sure how, how to really feel. I think he was just uh, okay for me. I kind of wish a lot of this season was a little bit more built around the shoes since a lot of it kind of is these elements that are kind of focusing on them. I just, I kind of wish it was a little bit more kind of like what Quad Strike uh, did for like pre and packs. This is either going in good or in great, but Chuzetsu. Uh, I really had Chuzetsu in peak, but I did have to think about it. So now you go to uh, Aiga Akaba, but I, I think Aiga is just a little bit more interesting than Volt uh, in every way possible for me. Uh, some stuff, I, I, I like how I actually develops. I think Aiga gets a little bit too much hate because, oh, he copied Volt's launch in the first episode, even though the whole point of that is that he's developing his own style to be his own blader. Uh, there's, there's kind of like the stuff where it kind of gets, eh. Like with the whole thing with the dark power thing that Aiga goes through, but there's other stuff too I I, I really enjoy. Like I I really like Fi. 
I like hearts. I, I like a lot of these aspects in this season. I think some of the stuff that kind of drags it down. I think the battleship cruise arc, I don't. There are some interesting elements that kind of lead to like a better story, but I feel like some of it kind of just gets kind of like dragged out just with all the battles that they kind of uh, put in it that kind of just, you know, kind of amp part for the season. I think the cast of characters are pretty cool actually. Uh, and it genuinely feels like a, unlike Zero G, it genuinely feels like a good transition between uh, like the previous character to like this new generation almost. So GT I have in good. So the thing is that GT I don't even, what is really the story that goes on in GT? I, I can't even answer that properly. Like they have this whole thing with like, was it like the resonance? I even forgot what it was called, but like the gold turbo. And like, it, it's really like this poor marketing thing. So first of all, we have a new protagonist again, by the way, which is Drum Core View. They, they have this thing where basically like the focus is like gold turbo or like the, this resonance thing, like the turbo resonance, right? Okay, and they don't do the best of job of building up to it because the entire thing is literally bullshit. <gasps> and it's literally just to advertise the fact that it's a one in like 72 or whatever that you can get like a gold rare recolor. I thought stuff with Arthur and Hell was kind of not interesting. I thought green was actually interesting. I think how they overall use most of the cast in GT is done pretty well. I think there is sometimes where it falls flat, like how they used Fumia, who still is infinitely better and more interesting than free in every way possible. But overall, uh, th this season doesn't have too much else going for it for an interesting story to be told. Uh, then after we get to Sparking, which is terrible. Sparking is an awful season. Um, it's a glorified ad. That's pretty much what it feels like. The entire thing is just, when you're watching it, you'll get the hype and everything because this whole season is basically marketed as fan service. Uh, but really, it's not that good. They have issues with Galing within their own logic within the show, like, or times in Burst where it's like, well, it's not really about who's stronger, it's about who uses like the tactics properly. And this is where he basically gets into my issue. He's like Lane. Lane's like the antagonist this season, and he's terrible. Uh, he has no depth to him at all. He goes through like really crappy development that they try to put him through. Uh, he's really, he just yells flare. That, that's his whole thing. He yells flare. He has a cool theme, cool OST, cool base. Terrible character. I also think the same thing can be said for the protagonist. They're also very shallow and in general, it's like they're just following traits. Like, okay, Hyuga says room room. Hikaru acts like a hero, I guess, does poses. Uh, the fan service. Um, so if you want to put a character there, it's like, do the terror purpose of the plot? How are you lot in them? And for some of Sparking, I think it was done well. I think a lot of the interaction between characters is really, really solid. I think a lot of the battles is pretty, pretty cool. But in general, what's sparking and a lot of my issues with almost pretty much every season of Beyblade Burst is like a lot of times uh, when they'll basically try to set up something and it goes absolutely nowhere and they have terrible execution on it. Yeah, also the pacing is really bad in this season, poor storytelling. And I think once you get to DB, it's almost the exact same criticism. I think Bell's the same issue, right? Because the new protagonist, uh, yeah, Bell's just like, oh, he pranks people. Uh, again, pacing is really, really terrible, especially in the second half when it drags a lot. A uh, little to no character is really written that well or really goes through any like proper character arcs or if they're trying to write for the development, they're, they're not doing it properly. Characters are written completely ignorant or just like moronic, like Bolt and DB when he can't recognize the phoenix armor from Thai and nobody points it out. Like, where, where's the world building? Or when Valkyrie's almost about to break, he noticed the signs, but he still battles? Come on. Rashad's like, they write him where it's supposed to be like, he's not enjoying Baylet or all this stuff, but in the season, it doesn't even reflect how they're trying to write him. Their character's like, Pain, where they like set up this whole revenge arc, whatever, that goes absolutely nowhere and feels like the biggest waste to watch. Yeah, this season was awful. Where we actually pick up is now we go back to good with Quad Strike. Now Quad Strike is pretty much what Sparking should have been or how it utilizes a lot of its characters. Um, Bell is still very annoying this season. I think he serves almost no, little to no purpose this season. Obviously there are very important aspects, I guess probably near the end where his character kind of matters, but maybe you could have just shifted that around almost for, for it to, uh, 
I don't know. I think pre and packs are basically the biggest highlights of this season, other than tremendous voice work done this season for their personalities in this stuff. I think how they build on lore with the elementals in some of the past seasons, I think is done exceptionally well. Uh, I think the pacing is kind of iffy near the middle. I think the start and the end are good. The middle is really, really mm, to bad, especially the Xander arc, which is awful. Pacing is pretty crap for kind of mo the entire season because they focus too much on flashbacks to fill out the episodes and not enough like actual work. A lot of times the art and the animation is a little bit poor and the battle choreography is kind of uh, terrible because obviously they, they're using Hasbro Beyblades. I have to explain. Basically, they've been all the way using Takeratomi Beyblades, but since Hasbro ordered this season, they're using Hasbro Beyblades, which are nerfed from Takeratomi Beyblades with no gimmicks or abilities. And because most of burst battles are essentially based on gimmicks and abilities, uh, it's very jarring to watch because they'll do like a special attack, but like the animation's there, but not actually like the movement. So I think for like overall final thoughts, I think Makuten shoots, it does what it does very well. It doesn't feel like an ad and it focuses on really good story work. Um, I think MFB, it focuses more on the epicness of the story than like, it focuses like on the epicness of the story, like the conflict the characters are thrown into. The battles are like very solid. They're almost trying to always one up each other, like very, very solid in that regard. Uh, Burst is more focused on the characters in like other seasons. I think they have trouble handling characters past their original debut season. I think a nuclear take is that Burst is, is almost too repetitive to watch at times because Burst is like, Okay, so what bake animation is, like when they animate a sequence for it to be repeated in future episodes, but Burst relies on it too, 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 too much. Like for example, Burst has avatars, like, you know, compared to your spirits or to your bit beasts, but like they almost rarely use them. So I like these cool designs that almost get never used at all, just for one sequence and maybe occasionally once or twice they interact with each other, which is absolutely criminal. I think if I was to overall try to rank it like overall, it's Bakuten. I think Burst has to still go at the end for me. I don't know. Burst has more lows than it does highs. MFB has more highs for me. Yeah, that's how we're gonna end it off, I guess. This is also not counting the manga. The manga is completely different for the viewing experience, but um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, I guess. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day and bye.